The street that led you here, Simcoe Street, was not named after a founding family or lifelong resident, but rather the enemy commander of the occupying British forces during the Revolutionary War. It was Lieutenant Colonel John Graves Simcoe, commander of the Queen's Rangers, who ordered his troops to cut down the vast apple orchard which once grew here and build a fort large enough for about 70 soldiers. From this position, they could watch over both the village and the bay. Though nothing of the old fort remains, this area is still called Fort Hill. Another important historic site which predates the Revolutionary War is still here, one of the towns and family's early graveyards. The cemetery is now owned by the town and is the final resting place of not only members of the towns and family, but also the Weeks, Butler, Haviland, and Stoddard families. John Townsend is believed to have been the first buried here in 1668. His initial headstone is greatly worn and weathered, but a bronze marker has been added, noting his immigration from England and his original ownership of this land. He and his two brothers, Richard and Henry, settled in Oyster Bay in the 1660s, and their descendants have been leaders in the community for centuries. Both Samuel and Sarah Townsend, the original owners of Raynham Hall, are here, as are six of their eight children, Solomon, Robert, Sally, Phoebe, David, and William. The historic marker commemorates Robert and Sally Townsend and makes reference to the Culper Spy Ring, which supplied General George Washington with critical information during the Revolutionary War. To learn more about the Culper Spy Ring, be sure to visit Raynham Hall Museum on West Main Street. 17th and 18th century graveyards dot the landscape of Oyster Bay, some almost invisible. There is one on Orchard Street, named after the Apple Orchard, another on Lexington Avenue, on the property of a housing development, a third on Cove Road, and yet another near the mill pond on Lake Avenue. In the names on these fading stones, we are reminded of the origins of our community and its long and fascinating history. Those same names often appear as street names as well, such as Weeks Avenue, White Street, Burtis Avenue, Audrey Avenue, named after Audrey Townsend, Feeks Lane, McCoon's Lane, Sugar Tom's Lane, Anstis Street, Underhill Place, Larrabee Avenue, and Simcoe Street, to name just a few. Each of these names has a story behind it, stories of the people of Oyster Bay. By visiting and watching over these old graveyards, we show our respect and care for these forefathers who built the village into what we now call home.